Number 66, integrated concepts, letter A. An aluminum power transmission line has a resistance of 0.058 ohm per kilometer. What is its mass per kilometer? So I don't really want to work with kilometers per se. We probably could, but I'm going to do a conversion to ohm per meter, just because I like to work with standard units. So this is ohm. This will be ohm per then one kilometer. So simply going to kilometer on the top, meter on the bottom, one kilometer is a thousand meters. So we do the division and that's minus three. Yeah, so that's going to be 5.8 times 10 to the minus five ohm per meter. All right. Now what I need to do is I need to <clears throat> consider uh, what we're trying to find or what we're given. I mean, we're really not given much, so we're going to probably be doing a lot of cancellations and substitutions. Um, so, you know, we're talking about, we know that there's a certain volume that's, a, you know, related to this, and uh, we're trying to find mass per kilometer. So what I'm going to do, and we're given resistance, so I'm probably going to start with this resistance formula. That is the resistivity multiplied by the length, all divided by the cross-sectional area. Now what I'm going to do, is going to look a little funky, but it should make sense, is uh, they gave me an ohm per length, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write resistance per length. I'm going to divide this side essentially by L. And if I divide that side by L, I must also do the same thing to the right-hand side. All right, I'm dividing it by L. Now don't rush to cancel this, okay? Uh, the reason being is this. What's area times length? Area times length is a volume. So in other words, now what I have is I have the resistivity multiplied by the length divided by the volume of this wire. Now, the reason why the volume is important is because, well, if I know the volume, then I can use the density to find the mass, right? So you got to look up the density, okay? One of the pieces is that this is the resistance per length, or in other words, this is this variable. So what I'm going to do to make my life a little easier is I don't want it to look like two separate variables. I'm going to just do R sub L, all right? So that's resistance per length. I have that value. I don't want to separate it. I want to keep it as one particular value. So now what I'm going to do, or look to do here, is solve this for volume. Simply just do a little cross multiplication, bada bing, bada boom. And then what I realize is what I was mentioning before is that we're going to have to use the density, mass divided by volume. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute on in. Okay, so that's the mass divided now by the volume. So this is going to be resistivity times length all divided by my resistance per length. So now let's clean this up a little bit, right? I mean... Well, actually, it's actually fairly straightforward. Actually, yeah, we don't have to clean that up, right? We're going to take, we want to solve this for, well, actually, yeah, mass per length might get a little confusing in the algebra, so let me just clean it up, sorry. So this is then density is going to equal the numerator, right, which was just m, and you can multiply that now by the denominator, the reciprocal of it. So r sub l on the top, and then dense, uh, resistivity, not density, uh, multiplied by then, the uh, length. So yeah, so now what we need to do is we have to solve for mass per length. So we can just combine this. All right, I'm going to do it in the upper left. So the density is equal to mass times the resistance per length, all divided by then the resistive, or I'll put the length there, multiplied by the resistivity. And look, lo and behold, there's the mass per length. So you got to bring these variables on over to the other side. So we're going to get then that the mass per length is going to be equal to the density multiplied by the resistivity all over the resistance per length. We know all these things now. The resistivity we look up for aluminum, the density we look up for aluminum, and the resistance per length we were given. It's all in meters. Just be careful at the end when you do your conversion. So now it's simply going to be the mass per length is going to be the density of aluminum, which was 2.7 times 10 to the 3, multiplied by then the resistivity, which was 2.65 times 10 to the uh, minus 8, and now divided then by the uh, <clears throat> same the resistance per length, which we found was uh, 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And all we got to simply do now is plug it on in. Careful, it's going to be per meter, 2.7 times 10 to the 3 times 2.65 times 10 to the minus 8. Uh, divided then by 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So there's going to be about 1.23, 1.23. And that will be in terms of kilogram per meter. You don't want kilogram per meter, though. You want kil kilogram per kilometer. So we probably could have left the units alone, like I said. But I, I just like to work with the standard units. And then think about conversions at the end. Because I know what the units should be then coming out of the formula. Anyway, just multiply that by 1,000. All right? Because uh, that would be meter, represent meter over kilometer. And we would have our answer. So this works out to be now 1.23 times 10 to the third kilo uh, kilogram per kilometer. And that is now the final answer uh, for letter A. 
Now for letter B, it says, what is the mass per kilometer of a copper line? So basically what I did, I gave you copper here. There's the information for copper. All you gotta simply do is literally use this formula again, plug in the density, the resistivity, and the resistance per length. They said it's the same. So you're gonna take this value that we found and plug it in for that. And then just do the calculation, all right? Simple enough. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Take care.